on behalf of Against the Tide Media and the many wonderful fans of The Chosen, I'm excited to be here with you once again today to do an interview that is unique because it's a completely different perspective. In the past, we've had the opportunity and privilege to talk to the cast members, the actors, and today we have someone for the first time who is actually a member of the production team. So we have Justin Overlander here today. Justin, thank you so much for coming. Darren, thanks for having me. It's a, an absolute honor to be with you. Thank you, thank you so much. So listen, uh, first of all, I wanna talk about Justin. Justin is an associate producer. And what does that mean? Well, we'll talk about it. Of The Chosen, and The Chosen, of course, is the first multi-season original series depicting the life and ministry of Jesus of Nazareth. So the fans and me were all so excited about this. And we have a unique opportunity here because instead of just looking behind the scenes, like we've done in the past, we're going to look to a point where there weren't any scenes. So we're gonna go way back. And that leads me into my first question with you, Justin. You are a former teacher and basketball coach. How did you get, what was the catalyst for you to go from academics and athletics to the world of acting and screenwriting entertainment? Well, it's interesting because I knew that I wanted to be in um, the film business to some degree, in, in some way, shape, or form, ever since I was was very young. And when I went to college, I first majored in computer science, and that kicked my butt. Way too difficult for me, not smart enough. And then I switched to business, which was too boring, and I thought, you know what, my heart is in the theater world, and so I'm gonna switch my major to theater. And I still remember very distinctly the phone call with my dad. I called him up and I said, guess what? I changed my major to theater. <laughs> and the first words out of his mouth were, what's your fallback going to be? <laughs> I'm like, oh, you just stabbed me right here. Um, and I, I have a, a wonderful relationship with my dad, and I don't fault him for saying that. I would probably have the same response if, if my child called me up and said that they were changing their major to theater because it's one of those scary majors. You know, what do you do with it if you're not going to be performing? It's such a competitive field. But uh, I ended up just making my fallback decision right there to switch to a degree in elementary education. And so I became a teacher. I uh, taught fourth and fifth grade for a few years and uh, was, in, was a basketball coach as well. I was a, a high school athlete, so I was always interested in, in doing the athletic side of things. And the classroom side was, was fine too. I still have actually a connection with some of my students that I had years and years and years ago. Um, but even while I was teaching, I was acting. I, I had an agent in, in the Twin Cities, and so I was doing, you know, like commercial acting and then industrial stuff, and, and independent movies would come through Minnesota once in a while. So I, I was scratching the, the acting itch. But then I ended up getting laid off from my teaching jobs three times in six years because of budget cuts, not because I wasn't performing or because I wasn't a quality teacher. It was just these levy referendums were not passing. And so schools had to cut money. And the way schools cut money in, in general is to lay off uh, the non-tenured teachers. I was like, well, if I'm going to just continue to go from school to school and then get laid off again and again, not because I'm underperforming, but just because I'm below man on the totem pole, I'm going to really dive into something where it's my, my, my skill level and my performance that is going to reward or dictate whether I'm going to succeed or not. So <laughs> acting is about as, as uh, um performance-based as you can get. Um, but even that's not necessarily true. It's, it's not necessarily whether you can perform. It's, it's so much about how you look and, and the whole package that you bring to things. And there are so many variables. But anyway, I was having 
a, you know, a medium amount of success doing commercials. And, and it was fun for people to say, hey, I saw you again in, in that commercial. But it just wasn't ever becoming the success that I wanted it to be. So God was withholding something from me. Well, fast forward now quite a few years, and here I am on The Chosen, which I wouldn't have been able to do had God granted me the success that I thought I was going to have at an earlier age. So I love the, the Steve Jobs quote of, you can't connect the dots looking forward, you can only connect them looking backwards. And so when I look back and I connect the dots and see the roundabout path and the, the oftentimes very, very difficult and, and painful path that brought me here, I can just see God's finger all along the way. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay, I get it. And I'm, I'm so thankful that I'm here right now because this is the most important project that I've ever, ever been involved with. So, so Justin, you have been involved in all sorts of different aspects of filmmaking from acting, screenwriting, directing, editorial, even down to, uh, being a composer, um, what, was the, what was the bridge to The Chosen that brought you there? It's interesting because when you're in a small market as a creative type, whether you're an actor or, or a writer or a director or an editor, you really try to hyphenate yourself as much as possible. You're not just an actor, you're a writer, actor, director, writer, actor. Well, then I moved to Los Angeles and there, they don't want the hyphens. You are either an actor or you are a director or you are a screenwriter. The, the more hyphens you have in your name, the more watered down your skill level is perceived. And so in a smaller market, you're trying to do it all, be it all. And I, and I produced a, a, a couple feature length movies, um, one of which is just awful and I don't advise anybody see it. Uh, and the second of which is so low budget, but is still something that I really, really love. Um, but I knew how to do enough to make myself just dangerous enough. I, I, I don't know that I ever got to a place where I was good enough to make it as any one uh, particular person. You know, if, if I had I moved to, to Los Angeles and said, hey, I'm an actor, that's all I am, I, I wouldn't have made it. I, I mean, well, I didn't make it as an actor. I had I moved there and said, I'm just a screenwriter. Well, you know, everybody's a screenwriter. It's, it's, it's one of those things where the, 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 the talent pool is so deep and everybody is good. There aren't a lot of legitimately bad actors or screenwriters or, or, or anything out there. So you're competing with a bunch of people that are just at your level. So it takes so much luck to really break into it. And honestly, getting into the chosen, luck is one of those dangerous words that, that Christians don't love throwing around because when you really break down luck, you see that there was something else kind of driving that. And so I don't necessarily say it was just yeah, it's luck that I got connected with The Chosen. But, but Dallas and I, um, Dallas Jenkins, the director of The Chosen, um, we met at a, a little conference uh, probably seven or eight years ago. And just, you know, we connected. We, we, we had lunch together at, at the convention and um, just, just stayed in touch cordially, you know, weren't like chums or anything, but, but we would send Facebook messages back and forth once in a while, um, text every, every once in a while too. And I found out about The Chosen. I, I don't even remember how I found out about it, but it was you know, right, right after The Shepherd had been finished and, and Dallas had been connected with the VidAngel people and, and Daryl Eves, our, our executive producer. And they were looking for somebody part-time just to help out with social media stuff. And so I, I messaged Dallas and I said, hey, you know, this, man, this, is, this is like a dream project. He said, well, yeah, but it's not a dream position. <laughs> so, but I, I had the time. I mean, I was out of teaching. I, I, you know, my, I was just kind of doing enough freelance stuff to just get by. My wife has full-time work, and so we had benefits through her. So it wasn't like it was, you know, just awful. But we were going through some really, really difficult times financially as, as a married couple. And so I was freelancing, and, and this was going to take a fair amount of time for not a whole lot of pay. But I knew that it was something that I believed in. And my, my literary manager at the time told me not to do it. 
uh, he's not my literary manager <laughs> anymore, but he, he said, no, 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 there, there's no way you do a job like this for the amount of pay that they're offering. And my argument was, it's, it's not about the pay. It's, it's not about even the potential to climb the ladder in, in the company or anything like that. It's about, this is a message that I really believe in. And it's being done in a way that I think is needed in the world today. So I started working part-time and then we get to, and, and Dallas had no idea that I could edit video. He had, uh, I, don't, I don't know how much he knew about any of the uh, skills that I had. I, I think he could tell that I was a fairly nice guy, <laughs> but what does that do for you in Hollywood? Um, but, but the combination of, of spiritual gifts that God has blessed me with have worked out really, really well for my particular role in The Chosen, which is welcoming people to set when we're shooting, taking care of our, our many investors that come and visit set, uh, taking care of the actors when they first arrive, because uh, for, for the actors out there watching this, you know what it's like to be a guest star on a running TV show where everybody knows each other and has been hanging out for the last five weeks and you come, you don't know the lay of the land, you don't know anybody. I'm kind of one of those people that goes and just makes sure that they're, they're comfortable and, and feeling like they're, they're welcomed. And then I oversee the behind the scenes uh, stuff while we're on set too. And then between production, now I'm editing video and, and, and corresponding on social media and, and uh, just a lot of customer service type stuff and, and then some creative things too. So long, long, long winded answer of saying that because of the variety of gifts that God has blessed me with, it has worked out to fulfill his needs for this project, God's needs. So your initial thoughts of this is, this is something kind of tailor-made and something I want to be part of. That, that was, you were coming from that direction from the get-go? Well, and, and to be perfectly honest with you, I never anticipated that I would be in the faith-based film world. I had this perception of the faith-based film world that it was all puppies and bunnies, cheesy, everybody's redeemed at the end. And that's not life. So I wanted to tell more life stories. And, 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 and I always termed it as I wanted to be the sheep in wolves clothing. I wanted to be in Hollywood and, and be in there with, with you know, all the, the dark stuff that's going on and just be the light in that circle. And it's actually Dallas that, that convinced me to write my first faith-based screenplay because he had been trying to do a number of, what's the term they use, faith-friendly, you know, where they're not faith-based. It's, it's not the, here's the redemptive moment. It's just, these are people that have to face consequences for their, for their actions, you know? It's, it's, it, it's, it's what should happen to Joey Tribbiani on Friends for being, being as as he is. There you go. There you <laughs> you know? which, which I, Friends is my all-time favorite show, but I'm like, man, I probably wouldn't hang out with any of them in real life. Uh, anyway, I, I, got, I got sidetracked there, but, but the idea of this being tailor-made for me 10 years ago, no. No, no way would I ever think I was going to be working full-time on a Bible show. I just, it wasn't even on my radar one bit. So even when it came about, I don't know that I said, well, this is tailor-made for me. It was more of a, maybe I've got something to offer it and we'll just see what happens afterwards. So uh, I'm, I'm digging this stuff. Thank you so much, Justin. Told you I was long winded. The fans are gonna dig this too. I like, and I appreciate your honesty too. We need that kind of stuff. So this is the most successful, and you know this more than probably anybody, crowdsourcing uh, project in history at I think eleven million dollars, somewhere in that neighborhood. But you also had the opportunity. We learned from our last interview. My illustrious co-host Timothy had the opportunity to interview Elizabeth Tabish, who you know magnificently portrayed Mary Magdalene, and. You were involved in casting as well. Can you tell us that story? On the fringes, uh, you know, I had no part in choosing her or anything like that. I, I want to be perfectly clear about that. But when I first got um, down to, to Dallas Fort Worth for the filming of episodes one through four, we, we hadn't cast the role of Mary Magdalene yet. And we were starting 
to sh I, I think I, I got there roughly a week before production began. So we're, we're doing the, the on-site pre-production stuff. And one of the things Dallas asked me to do right away was come in and, and read opposite of the actors coming in to audition. Because I, I actually have auditioned for Dallas before I auditioned for The Resurrection of Gavin Stone. And so he knew that I, I could act. Um, so I, I just, I went in to help read. And Liz and I are, are doing the scene and, and we're both just crying. I mean, she is, she is giving something that is just, I can't, I can't control myself. And the, the emotions are, are there. And, and it's just, when, when she left the room, I mean, Beverly um, Holloway, our, our, our casting director, our Los Angeles casting director, and, and Dallas looked at each other. And then uh, Tony Brock and Sally Allen, our, our Texas casting directors, were, were they all just kind of, <laughs> I mean, everybody is just kind of quiet. And then there's just this, <sighs> we found her, you know? And, and they had known, this was the callback. So they had known that she was probably going to work. But, but that, that audition, and, and I even feel myself getting emotional about it now because there was just such a, such a deep connection that she had with the character that was just right for it. And uh, that was a really, really neat opportunity for me. I mean, not only with, with Liz, but I, I, I remember when Brandon Potter came in to read for Quintus and he just comes in with the swagger without being cocky. I mean, there's, there's that fine line of, of, can you be confident and have swagger without being cocky? And Brandon has that. And he walked in and he read through the scene and then Dallas gives him a couple notes and Brandon just gets this look. Yeah, 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 I'll do that. And then, and then he does a, a completely different read of the character and, and we're like, this guy's good and this guy gets it. So, so moments like that when you're on the, the, you know, the casting side of the, of the table are, are so neat to see. And, and I tell you what, that has helped me tremendously as an actor too. So if there are any actors, any up and coming actors watching this, if you can reach out to a casting director and ask if they need a volunteer. Even if you're just sitting at the front desk, taking headshots, checking off that they showed up, do it. Do, 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 do it. Because if you can get on the, the casting side, it helps you so much as an actor to see what other people are bringing in on the other side. That is a great recommendation. I know that Harrison Ford read for Star Wars and it did him pretty well. Yeah, he was he was a carpenter on Warner Brothers lot, I think, when when yeah. The rest is history. <laughs> the rest is history. Okay, here's kind of a weird question, but get used to different, right? Um, if you could play any character with your strong background in acting, if you could play any character on the chosen, who might that be? Quintus. Of course. It's gotta be Quintus, right? Who wouldn't want to play Quintus? <laughs> And I already talked about Brandon, you know, there's no way that I could play it as well as, as Brandon does. But, uh, you know, maybe, it, maybe it'll be revealed that the, the Roman messenger is Quintus's brother at some point, and we can have a whole scene together. Who knows? Oh, get me, Breeder! It's urgent. No kidding. King Herod's envoy approaches. Spotted where? Outside Gennesaret, riding north. Captain. Silvius Gamalius, son of Senator Gamalius, will be arriving in one hour. Yes, Dominus. Prepare my guard for inspection. <laughs> nice. So, so this has been ongoing in all the interviews we've done. Um, there seems to be a lot of humor on set. This is going to lead me into one of the fan base questions. Um, so obviously, there's a great deal of authentic affection and friendship between the cast members, without question. But uh, any funny stories to share? Any humor you saw, or is that just all? Oh, there, there, no, there's, there's a lot of humor going on. Um, I, I, Giovanni hit on it with, with some of the, uh, the singing and dancing that goes on between takes. And, uh, you know, there's, I remember in episodes one through four, it was um, Nick and George and, and Cheyenne, who was our original Big James. Um, and Cheyenne is, is great. We, we would have had him back, uh, but he 
got cast in a, in a different show and wasn't able to to be with us again. But then then Kean, of course, is amazing as as Big James as well. But anyway, those three just had these inside jokes, and they would let me in on them. And uh, one one of them involved a, a particular name of of a celebrity that that uh, I I won't divulge all of the details. But at one point, I had written this person's name onto the dressing room door right next to those three. So when they showed up at set, and this was an empty dressing room, so when they show up to set, they see, they walk by the dressing rooms and they're like, George, you know, George, uh, Kean, uh, Nick, actually it's their characters names. So it'd be Big James, John, Zebedee. And then the next door was was this name. And so, and it, you know, it's, it's stuff like that where they're not expecting it and they just show up on set and they're like, <laughs> <laughs> just ended that. Uh, it, it just, man, I, I don't know. This is, this is, um, sometimes we take this business so, so seriously. Um, but in reality, we're, we're not, we're not curing uh, cancer or anything like that. We're, we're, we're telling, um, we're, we're telling the story of the gospel, which is, which is ultra important, but the gospel can be told without the chosen. So, it's like we're, we're making a TV show here. We have to remember that at the end of the day, this is not necessary. This is a bonus. This is a gift. And if we're not having fun with this gift, then what good is it? Well, that leads perfectly into the first question by one of the fans. Her name is Janet Hayes. And Janet says, what was the most fun for you during the first season? the first season shoot, what was the funnest thing that you did? It's hard to rank, but the one that comes to mind first is at the end of, of the entire run. Like this is, this is, I think the last, yeah, the very last night of, of the, uh, the shoot we did for the second half of season one. And it's, it's the whole wedding dance. So it's an overnight shoot. It's about two or three in the morning. And Dallas had, had said, we, we need a, we need kind of a, a, a classic Jewish song that they can dance to. So I find something on, on Amazon Prime or, or wherever, and I download it, and, and, and we're like, that's, yeah, that works. It, it's not the song you hear in the show, because it's licensed, of course, but uh, it's what we used on set. And so I had, I had talked to our, our sound department, and I'd gotten a, a, a big speaker that I could plug my computer into and play the song right off of there. So every time we're ready to do that scene, our assistant director, Adam, just, just kind of, you know, points at me. And then I start the music and there's like a, you know, an eight beat intro. And so I'm going, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, dance. <laughs> So we did that six or seven or eight times and, and we get to a take and, and everybody, I mean, this, the energy level is just super high. We're all just really digging this. I mean, it's, it's still hot. It's, it's like 75 and still humid in, at two in the morning in Texas, but everybody's in good spirits. We're just, you know, it's exciting. We're pumped up and we get to it and Adam's like, all right, Justin, nothing, <laughs> nothing plays. And I'm like, okay, 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 one, one second, one second, one second. Just still doesn't play. <laughs> and so everybody, and that, it just like- Too funny, everything. too funny. It deflates everything. And, and, and finally it turned out that my, my computer had disconnected from Wi-Fi. Like I wasn't able to download the song right to my hard drive because of what, whatever Amazon subscription I had. So. And I'm, but I'm going through every chord and, and it's like, you know, and Dallas is like, just, you know, making fun of me as, as he's so good at doing, but everybody's waiting around. So about five or six minutes later, finally the internet gets going again and we're able to get back into it. But it was just one of those, yeah, we'd had six, seven, eight good takes in a row. And then we're all excited to do this other one. This is going to be the one and ah, nothing. So that was, um, that was pretty memorable and, and, and just a fun <laughs> fun, frustrating few minutes, but we all, we all laugh about it. 
Well, that leads in really well to the next fan base question. We have uh, Jerry Barnett. And Jerry says, Justin Overlander, your joy is contagious and your goofy side is so wonderful to see. My question is, while filming is happening, do you get emotional watching the scenes come to life? Yeah. As much as we like to have fun, there are, and, and, and even while we're having fun, sometimes, sometimes laughter can turn into, uh, you know, uh, just, just this overwhelming, I don't know if verklempt is the right word, but uh, I remember the very first week of production and, and it's, we're, we're shooting most of episode three in week one. And it's, so it's Jesus and the kids. And I just remember standing off camera and, and watching the kids interact with Jesus and, and, and you know, with, with Jonathan who plays Jesus so wonderfully. And I'm just looking at the emotion on, on Jonathan's face. And this, this whole idea of, of Jesus with kids. And it, it, at that moment when I'm watching some of this happen, I'm just thinking, this, this may be really how it was. And this may be really how it's going to be someday. You know, we don't know for sure, but that's the Jesus that I picture the one that is willing to listen to these kids and the one that's willing to listen to anybody really i am the lord your god amen beautiful very good and i just i i remember just being offset and, and actually getting to the point where i'm you know i'm starting to to you know embarrassingly weep because I'm so emotional over just seeing Jesus with kids. Um, you know, and then the, the obvious emotional times too are, are you know, the healing of the, the paralytic, the, the healing of the leper, um, the end of, of episode one um, on set crying. And, and then I, I'm, I'm an emotional, I don't know if you can sense this, but I'm an emotional guy. So um, there are times where I'm even just interacting with our investors that have come to set and I'll start to get emotional. Um, you know, I, I interview them when they come to set. I, I try to interview all of them and we get them on, on camera. And I, I just remember listening to some of their, their stories and sentiments about why they believe in this project and why they, you know, wanted to be a part of it. And I'm just, you know, standing off camera and, and crying and, and, uh, you know, it's just, it, it, gets, it gets overwhelming at times in a, in a good way. It's just so wonderful to see people come together for this common cause. So yeah, definitely get emotional on set. That's a great question. <laughs> it is a great question. I love to hear from the fans like this because they're, you know, they're actually really thinking through stuff. What can I really ask? And here's uh, the last one we have for this particular interview is Virginia Heimel. I hope I pronounced that right. She says, what do the actors do to pass time in between filming scenes? It depends on the actor, <laughs> really. But uh, there, there's a, a group of disciples that like to play football. Uh, Jordan, who plays little James, always brings his football to set. And so, <laughs> the, the, the wardrobe department <laughs> sometimes gets after them because they're wearing out their sandals. And so Jordan uh, actually ends up going barefoot, I think, on, on the asphalt. Because sometimes we're, uh, depending on where we're shooting, sometimes the only open area is to play in a, in a big parking lot. But no, I, I go in there. I mean, I grew up as a football player in high school. And, and uh, so I, I, I can't resist getting in there and, and playing some catch. And, Sometimes it gets pretty intense where we're running around and we're getting all sweaty and, and uh, wrecking sandals and uh, sometimes falling onto the ground. <laughs> uh, so there, there's a lot of, of things that we, uh, that we do to pass the time. But, and and that, that is, you know, the actor side of thing, they, they do have time to, uh, to, to relax. And, and oftentimes they're working on lines. And uh, one, one of the neat things too that, about what I'm able to do because I have some flexibility on set is I'm able to read lines with actors back and forth and, and help them 
So I've got to ask, and I, uh, I think I've asked all the interviews I've had the privilege to do, I usually ask this question, with millions, literally millions of fans watching from all over the world, did you have any idea how monumental this project was going to be and how it was going to affect the entire globe? I am. Um, whenever I think of the scope of the chosen itself, I, I take the chosen part out of it and I just go back to the source material. Because yes, I do believe that the Bible has the potential and should reach every inch of this planet. I, I believe that the love of Jesus belongs in the heart of every single person living on this planet. Well said, my friend. So if I take away the chosen from the equation, I can answer without any hesitation, yes. I believe that this should go everywhere. But when you put the chosen back into it, did I foresee that this would be at the stage that it's at now? No, of course not. Um, I, I've been doing this, <laughs> I've been in this industry long enough to know that anytime you think you've got a slam dunk, you probably don't. And, and many times as an actor, when I've walked out of an audition and said, I stunk up the joint and then I get that role, I just know that this industry does not follow rules. It does not follow patterns even. I mean, when you think you've got the pattern figured out, the pattern switches again. So I, I, I don't know what God has in store for the chosen. And, and, and honestly, I, I mean, it sound, this, this might sound trite, uh, but I don't care. I, 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 I don't care about the chosen as much as I care about the message. If the chosen gets to the ends of the earth and is a revival, great. I'm happy that God trusted me to be a part of it. If it doesn't, great. I'm glad God stopped us before we could screw this up <laughs> because I just want to do what God wants done with this. So whatever happens, happens. I'm just trying to be as humble as possible and obedient and just doing what God wants me to do with this. So Against the Tide Media always ends our interviews, and we'll always do it this way, according to our strict bylaws. No, we don't have any bylaws, but we're always going to do it this way, where our guest has the last word. What would you like to leave our, our fans today? The Chosen isn't the end game. <laughs> if, if we, as the Chosen, are not encouraging you to get back into Scripture, encouraging you to really ignite that relationship with Jesus, then I feel like we're failing. If the chosen is helping you connect to Jesus in a deeper, more spiritual way, then I think the chosen is doing what God wants it to do. If it's helped you, tell others. That's what we want, is, is for more people to see and experience Jesus in, in, in a in a real way, a, a, a way that makes him more approachable. Um, but we're not the end game. We're just a, we're just a path, and hopefully a, a path that can have some sort of revival. It's a great answer. If it does, great. If it doesn't, God's bigger than this. <laughs> God's way bigger than the chosen. And, uh, you know, I'm just trusting that, that he's got all of this in his hands. Well, Justin, thank you from the bottom of my heart for this interview. It was such a unique angle to look at The Chosen from the production side of things, while at the same time from the acting side of things. And it was amazing. A time, time well spent. And we appreciate your time and what you're doing for The Chosen. And all the fans I know would say this too, we are hoping for season two and <laughs> we're doing all we can to ensure that that happens. And I think it will, but thanks so much for being here. And, and thank you, Darren, for having me. Thank you, Noah. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, all of you guys at uh, Against the Tide. We really appreciate all that you're doing. And out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, dance. <laughs> Hey! 
Hey, I'm Justin, associate producer of The Chosen. If you liked what you just saw, please click the like button. Please click the share button. Please follow us on Facebook. Please follow us on YouTube. Please follow us on Instagram. Please follow us around with fans and water because it's hot. If you didn't like what you just saw, you can keep it to yourself. No need to be a chatty Cathy. However, if you have not seen the first four episodes of The Chosen, the first ever multi-season show about the life of Christ, go to thechosen.tv right now. Is that Dallas enough for you? Word on this computer. Okay, I see recording. It says recording. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. All right, so I'll count myself in. Sure. Rock and roll. Yes, is what we say. Uh, let's see here. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> www.thechosen.tv I was talking with Dallas the other night and he said, you know, I'm such a good director, I feel like I need to handicap myself a little bit. So instead of looking through two eyes, he decided to cut himself down by one eye, just so he's more online with other directors. How I, well, and with the rest of you, it's how I kind of come down to your level in terms of you know, just general awareness of, of life, you know? Just another sign of your humility. Yeah, no, I'm, well, as I've said, I'm... I am the most humble guy that I know. Right, right. And this helps. So. Appreciate that. And that is Justin Overlander. Justin, thank you so much for being here today. We greatly thanks appreciate it. No, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, and you know what? Sorry, Justin. Here's the deal. We're recording and it's gallery view, which means it's speaker view. So what I'm going to do is he can cut that. I'm going to go in and do that again. Then we'll pull out to you and we'll be able to actually rip this and go. Do I need to change anything on my end? You don't have to do anything. Okay. What I did basically, we we're, we're recording and we're still recording, is it was in speaker view. So it was only seen, it was seeing me full screen, you a little bit now and then if you said anything at all. And I want to start with split screen like we are now. And as soon as you start talking, we'll go full screen. And then sure. we'll, be, we'll be in the interview. Sure. <laughs> So now I'm in the hair trailer and Ashley's actually doing my hair, but because I'm an actor today, I'm going to pretend to forget her name. So thanks you, Ashley. <laughs> I mean. Nothing hides like hey. Hey. Hi. Now to make it look like I'm not just covering a <laughs> but those of you that have been following along with us for a while now know that we are trying, we're actually raising the bar, hoping for something great. No good? You probably want to squash me right about now or at least artichoke me. One of the cool things I get to do is actually see animals that I don't normally see. Oh, wait, no, you're not the animal. No. But here is a water buffalo. Everybody's got a water buffalo. Mm. As a Minnesota guy, I always am interested in what it sounds like when doves cry. Seriously, just got quiet the moment I got over here. Hello? Not gonna lie, they're just like my kids. Loud, loud, loud until I want them to say something and then they shut down. So I wanted to give you a Lewis quote that I happen to really like. Christianity of false is of no importance. And if true of an, of Sorry, we'll go back on that one, uh, Noah. I'll take a drink while we're, while there we're we cutting. Go. Yeah, there we go. So in light of that, the answer you just gave, uh, we had mentioned, we had talked together. <laughs> take another drink. <laughs> it's become a drinking game. <laughs> a bizarre drinking game. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Been here less than five minutes and I've already asked for my first autograph. So what have you seen me and why do you want my autograph? Um, th this is just the most normal 
paperwork everybody has to sign us. And we'll delete this one. This has been an, a great mm -hmm. interview. Okay, so let's get back into it. Noah. So I'll, I'll, I'll give, you know what, you, you ended it well enough. I, I can just say thank you. Let's, let's leave it at that, okay? So here we go, Noah, here's, here's, here's the, the, the end. <laughs> so we're turning it around, it's on me now. I've been nailing it, knocking it on the park every time. I think they have a no autograph policy on this set because nobody's really approaching me, but I'm cool with that. No phones on set, man. So we'll go back to the next question. Do, do, do. Day 30, three hours away from rap, and we're still partying away. <laughs> I get to be the DJ. The DJ <laughs> at the most Jewish thing I've ever been to in my life. DJ time. Just waiting for my cue. And playback. Who says Bible shows have to be boring? Day went great. Um, director might even stay in touch with me. Might work with them again. So life's looking good. Uh, I'm blessed. All right. <laughs> Maybe. Thank you so much, Justin. That rocked, and it actually is recording. <laughs> For real? I think if I told you about Nick's. We did. I did all of Nick's. He was nailing it. It was so moving, and I'm like, and I look over, this was with Skype, and I look over and I'm like, oh, no. I go, uh, hey, Nick, what are you doing later on today? <laughs> he goes, what? And I go, it's not recording. I had, I'm doing a lot better with Zoom. I had, I had some real issues with Skype. But anyway, that's a whole other thing. So anyway, <laughs> thanks so much. Uh, I know that, um, Noah will do a great job on the editing. He always has. Anything that you directed in there, he'll follow through on. Whatever you want, we'll do. But yeah, I, I trust you guys. A chance to just, you know, again, tell Dallas thanks for the support and encouragement. You guys have really helped us a lot just for the fact that you said, okay, you know, okay, do this. Um, and we we want to we want to ante up a little bit. We want to get to uh, production to look better. I got a tie with a nice full you know, I don't know if I'll do this. I'm waiting for my uh, my merchandise, my swag. From yeah. Those and, so I'm well, like, and I, 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 noticed I didn't frame. Yeah. I think I was framed like this, so you couldn't even see the the words, but, but I think oh, that's whatever hit the fish. Yeah. People, yeah. people know. People get it. So anyway, when I when I leave this, I hit end recording and it will save it to my computer. If that doesn't work, I've done it. I've done this. I'm going to be so mad. But as soon as you record it automatically, Skype doesn't. Skype, you have to tell. You have to say, please oh. record this. Um, but it, when you go out of Zoom, it actually records the file and converts it into a video file. Okay. So again, Man, I appreciate it, Justin. I hope that we stay in contact. You've been you've been awesome. It's been no, great yeah, we'll, we'll, to know you for the you know the short time that we have, but hopefully we'll get to know each other better down the road. Yeah, I hope so as well. We're all in this together. That's uh, my firm belief. <laughs> Thanks for. I know it's a lot later. Oh, it's one eleven. I'm like, is it eight? Can I go to bed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it's, only it's all good. Two eleven here. Three eleven. Three eleven. Yep. Three eleven. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. Anyway, thanks, my friend. So I'm right. going to end the meeting, and it's going to save, and I'm going to immediately get this to Noah so he can do his magic, and then we'll go from there. Sounds good. Thanks, Darren. Take Have care. a good day. All right. Hey, it's Dallas. I'm the creator of The Chosen. And yes, season one of The Chosen is complete. All eight episodes, they're available right now. You can look up The Chosen in the App Store or Google Play, and we're easy to find. You can download it and be watching within minutes. And in fact, it's unprecedented technology. You can connect to almost any device you have directly, and you don't even need a subscription. So I hope you'll check out season one of The Chosen right now.